Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're talking about the best free large language models that you can use today absolutely for free. You won't have to pay a penny. However, there is a little bit of a uh, secondary cost that you might have, not in terms of financial cost, but in other ways. So stick around and make sure you understand what that is. And then I'll actually be testing a couple of these free models so you can see for yourself how well they do and whether or not you might want to use them in your process. If you're new here, my name is Jason. I'm the nerdy novelist and uh, after writing 14 books the traditional way and working a couple of years in, with a major self-publishing brand called Kindlepreneur, I went full-time on this channel to help authors understand how to use AI properly in a way that doesn't compromise your ethics or your creativity, but uses it as a productivity tool. So let's start by looking at what are the free models that you can use and where do you even find these free models? What's the best way to use them? For me personally, I find that the best way way to access these free models is through a service called Open Router. And if you've been on this channel for a while, you'll know, have seen me talked about Open Router in the past, but this is Open Router right here. It is basically a hub for almost all of the models that you will find. Certainly not everything, but most of the important models, you will find them here. And in order to find the free models, the best place to go is up here at the top where it says models. We'll go ahead and select that. And then from here, we have a list of all of the models that you can get through Open Router. But if you want just the free ones, over here on the left, you'll see you have this prompt pricing. Just drag this all the way down to free and you will get all the free models. And they're usually clearly marked with this free right here in the name. So by default, these are sorted by what is the newest model on here. And this is one of the reasons why it took me a while to make this video is because I didn't necessarily know how to say which models are the best models because there's new free models coming here onto Open Router every day and uh, or at least every week. There's new ones. By the time this video goes out, there will probably be some that you don't see here, but that's okay. I will still give you an idea of what these models can do. But for now, just understand that there are a lot of models that come on this platform and uh, you just kind of have to test them all yourself. And this video will be very outdated in terms of the actual models here very quickly. But by default, you'll see that these are sorted by which one came most recently. But something that I find pretty handy, if you go up here to sort and then sort by top weekly, you will actually find the ones that are being used use the most. And this can be handy in knowing which ones are likely to have a really strong output or strong usefulness because people are using these more and more than other models. And so this is a great way to understand, okay, did the deep seek models uh, seem to be high here? There's several variations of the deep seek models here, but we also have Quen3 Coder. This one you're not going to need as a, since this is a creative writing channel, because this one is specific to coding. So that's another thing you might want to look at the descriptions and see like is this kind of meant more for coding or for other things or is this something that can write and keep in mind that just because they are used a lot here because it's the top of the week does not necessarily mean that it will be good at creative writing because very often i think we find that just because something is good at creative writing it's not necessarily good at other things and vice versa for instance the gpt models tend to be really great at a lot of things, but they lack when compared to, say, the Claude models when it comes to creative writing, for the most part. These are some of the ones that I would start testing uh, if you sort by top weekly. You can also just sort by newest to see which ones are newest and that you want to try out because they might actually be pretty good and just aren't used as much. They're not showing up in the top weekly just because they're newer and they haven't had enough time to catch on. Now, because these are free, at least they are free for us, these are not actually free for the people using them, right? Uh, they may be low cost models, but they're not going to be absolutely completely free for the people using them. And so for that reason, uh, there is actually a cost involved. It's just not a monetary cost. And to illustrate that, if you go up here to your settings in Open Router, you will see a setting that uh, highlights this. So in the privacy setting, so once you're in your settings, you go down to training, logging, and privacy. And then here you'll see this little dashboard here. You'll see this one in particular is worth noting. It says, enable free endpoints that may train on inputs. Free model providers often retain and or train on prompts and completions 
and which applies to both the chat room and the API usage. So this is incredibly important to understand that if you are using a free model, you are likely giving permission to the creators of that model to use your inputs to further train the model. Now, if you're someone like myself who understands how AI works, then this isn't as big of an issue as you might think, because you know the inputs that I put in there, it's like a drop of sand in, uh, or it's like a drop of water in the ocean, right? It, it's not going to matter very much to the whole and the likelihood of your ideas somehow spreading to other authors is extremely low. And to be frank, your ideas are probably not that original to begin with. And it's unlike, highly unlikely that anything's going to get stolen. Uh, you probably have a greater chance of winning the lottery than that happening. But if you are working with sensitive data, that might be a different thing. If you're working with, like, say, social security numbers or credit card numbers or stuff like that, that's one instance where I would say, even the smallest chance is not worth the risk. And so you probably don't want to use these free models if you're dealing with sensitive data. And there might be other reasons why you definitely need to have everything closed off from a privacy perspective. One of the best ways you can do that is actually to download these models. A lot of these models can be downloaded directly onto your computer using a tool like LM Studio or Olama. You do need a beefy kind of like gaming computer type thing to be able to run those. But that is a way of using these models inexpensively with privacy. So that's just something to keep in mind. Keep in mind here in Open Router, if you leave this toggled off, chances are you will not be able to use a lot of those free models. They just won't let you do it because the cost of them allowing you to use it for free is the training data that you give them. Uh, so that is the actual cost. Nothing is ever free in this life, just generally. But because I don't really care about that and I don't work with sensitive data, I have no problem leaving this turned on. So now if we wanted to test these, uh, keep in mind that our things would likely be used to train the model. So let's actually look at a few of the tests. Uh, for this, I grabbed one of my standard tests that I run most uh, anytime I do a thorough testing of a model. I have a couple of different prompts that I run. And this is one of them. I only use the one. Uh, but the prompt goes, write the first 500 words of this epic fantasy book using the following story beats. The chapter summary is provided for context, but only write the section outlined in the story beats right in third person omniscient. And then I give it chapter summary and story beats. From there, I tested several of the DeepSeek models. Uh, DeepSeek V3, uh, from, that's from March. And DeepSeek R1 from May uh, with the Quen 388 billion parameter. I also used this one, GLM 4.5 Air, and Kimi K2, which is a relatively new one. I also put in Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental, for, which is also for free. Google has actually made a lot of their models free initially because they're trying to train them and refine them and make sure that they, you know, that they're high quality. And so they make them free initially so they can train it further on that data so they can, you know, unravel some of the bugs that they have. Uh, and then later they make it not free. <laughs> and so you'll see if you look through a lot of the models uh, that were once free, uh, sometimes there will be Gemini models in there. But if it's been a while and they've already released a newer version of that Gemini model, then the old version, the free version, likely isn't there anymore. And it is often throttled quite a bit as well. In fact, I was actually not able to generate a response with Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, then I tried this one, Quen3, with 235 billion parameters. I tried the most recent open source model from OpenAI, the GPT OSS, 20 billion parameter. And then this new one, which I talked about in my Not Safe for Work video called Uncensored, uh, which for Not Safe for Work content, I found pleasantly surprised with the output there. I thought it was pretty good compared to a lot of the others. And so let's take a look at some of these responses. Uh, DeepSeek V3 did a rather small response. This is definitely not 500 words. And um, I would say it's kind of more or less mediocre, uh, but it certainly, it did stick to the instructions and, you know, it was okay. We'll just say that it was okay. But this one I thought was much better. This is DeepSeek 
Scar 1 from May. And this one had some reasoning in it. It reasoned for five seconds and you can see what the reasoning was here. And I think that does sometimes, especially for open source models and smaller models like this, it can improve the output quite a bit. Uh, and this one was much more around the length that I expected. And there's actually some pretty good gems in here, like a low rancid cough echoed from down the track. Haldred whirled around his breathing, catching in a ragged gas. Horror, profound and absolute, washed over him as the slope between him and the gate emptied. Dozens of them. The stomach-turning cadence of their movements marooned itself in his terror-stricken awareness. Gray skin, thinning hair, scraped back from bulging foreheads. Body swaying with a grotesque jerking gait amplified by noisy, leathery feet that skittered over rock packed earth. As someone who has seen this scene written now probably like over a hundred times, this feels a little bit unique. It still has a number of AI-isms in there and a lot of stuff that doesn't feel quite as natural. But I think one of the things I find with a lot of the Chinese models is that they don't necessarily spell things out the same way most of the, the English models do, if that makes sense. Or at least the ones that originate here in the States. And so sometimes you get stuff that's just a little bit different and in a good way. Uh, so I thought this one was definitely a one of the better ones, Deep Sea Gar 1 from uh, May 28th, Quen 38B for free. That one was a pretty good one. Then we get this one, GLM 4.5 Air. Again, not quite a whole lot of text here. It's definitely just telling the whole way. We get that same moment here. And they moved with that unmistakable jerky motion, their limbs twisted at unnatural angles. Uh, dozens of them. Their gray skin, barely distinguishable from the dusk-shrouded landscape, were gaining on him with relentless, single-minded purpose, the hungry. His heart hammered against his ribs as he recognized them, the terror he'd suppressed, surging back to the surface. So it's certainly not bad, but there's really nothing special about it either. Okay, same kind of goes for Kimmy K2. A very short response didn't... The reason why I criticize it for the short responses is that usually... Not always, but usually when you're writing a scene, you want to actually kind of savor a lot of the moments and get really into it. And typically when a model is writing really short prose, it's doing a lot of telling rather than showing. Uh, now, this isn't a rule across the board, but it's kind of the trend that I see often when something is short. It's not actually giving enough time to really flesh out the scene, to really see it. Yeah, from Haldred's eyes and, uh, you know, just really get into that that perspective. It's just sort of like high level, talk, 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 talk. And to be fair, I, I do ask it to write in third person omniscient, but I would expect a little bit more description, a little bit more like savoring the different details, especially at that particular moment that I've read off so far when he sees this, these like zombie like creatures. That is a moment where we would want to pause and really get a sense of how he's feeling by seeing all of these creatures following him but even though this is shorter it does have some pretty good description and use of words that i wouldn't necessarily go with but i kind of like like we have across the ashen plain that's a little bit of an ai-ism right there two dozen figures jerked in broken chorus arms akimbo at impossible angles gray skin indistinguishable from the split granite under their bare feet they did not walk so much as fall, catching themselves falling again as though marionettes designed by a drunk puppeteer. And so that's, uh, that could be worse, right? And then as like I mentioned, Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental did not generate a response. So we'll go ahead and skip that. And then we have Quen 3. This one I actually thought was pretty good. And it's quite long too. It might actually be a little too long. Sometimes if it gets too long, you get the opposite problem was as what I was talking about before, where it's got too much description. It's too flowery, too poetic, etc. This is the main, uh, the main problem with the GPT models, even the recent GPT-5. But if we read this, we have, he glanced back, he knew better than to turn, and the figures were there, scattered across the horizon like broken teeth. They moved with that wrongness he'd watched his companions dissolve into near the end, each step jerky angled as though their spines had snapped and mended wrong. Their skin was the sick gray of rotting marrow peak blossoms, peeling in sheets to reveal cracked flesh uh, beneath. Half a dozen lanterns by now, or no, fewer. The expedition would have listed them as 17 in number, but he'd counted more since the third night. One caught his eye, a child, or what lingered of a child, its neck bent in an impossible angle. So it's doing some really good description here, and even going into places that weren't in the instructions, but make sense in the context of the story, like looking at this child, uh, who is among the hungry like that's a great little detail it actually does this is probably maybe my favorite of these ones that i've uh, tested here and notice that the deep seek r1 it also i don't know if this is like merged with quen 3 it's like a, or a, some kind of 
Quen 3 variant? I don't know. But Quen 3 and uh, Deep Seek R1, Quen 3 AB uh, have been my favorite so far. This one was definitely pretty good. In fact, this one almost competes with uh, some of the bigger models, I would say. GPT OSS 20B. This is a recent one from OpenAI. It's one of their, you know, cheaper and uh, open source models. And this one does write plenty for the scene, but I would say uh, it actually doesn't do a very good job. In fact, the beats that I gave it end right about here. So that amount is actually not too long. And then everything after this is uh, extra that it wrote. It continued on past the scene, which is a big no-no and not something I would want. And also the prose itself, I would say is comparable to older GPT models that are not so good. So for an open source model, it's still okay. And it does do some reasoning in here, but on the whole, I'd say this one was not my favorite. And then last but not least, we have Uncensored, uh, which is this model that uh, I believe is a fine-tuned version of Mistral Small. This one, once again, it's, you know, maybe a little short here. We can make it a little longer, um, but you could probably do that with some prompting. And if we look at this moment, it says, as he looked back, his heart sank on the horizon, scattered figures moved with jerky erratic movements that set a chill down his spine. That's a little AI-ism right there. At least two dozen of the hungry were visible, their gray skin barely discernible from the dust-like wasteland. Haldred knew their presence meant certain death. The policy in Varlden was clear when the hungry were this close, the gates remained shut. So not a whole lot of description there, but I have found that this uncensored model is pretty decent overall, especially when prompted with, you know, maybe some more complex prompts. It's also an excellent one for not safe for work content, if that's something that you're interested in. So I would definitely keep this up there, but my favorites so far have definitely been the Quen models, at least out of this list. Hopefully there are versions of, of Quen that remain free for longer, uh, but that's just something to keep in mind. And again, remember that these aren't necessarily completely free because the cost is giving them permission to use your inputs. So that may be a big drawback for some. But on the whole, I thought these were pretty decent, especially they've come a long way from uh, even like a year ago, I would have said that you should never use the free models because you get what you pay for, right? Uh, but these days, as the open source models get better and as more and more companies are making their models free in order to have that feedback, you're getting better and better free models on here all of the time, which means that you can do quite a bit using a free model. It's just going to show that that gap between the open source and the like uh, the closed models is getting closer and closer uh, as we move along. And I give it a couple more years before uh, these open source models, the, either the free ones or the really, really affordable ones, will be just as good as what we get through the heavy hitters like Claude Opus right now, if not better. And uh, certainly it'll get to a point where you could write your entire book for free or for a minuscule cost, like under a dollar. So that's just some of my thoughts on that. Hopefully this video has been useful for you. I will see you in the next one.